Hi, this is Mrs. Wyman. This is Chapter 3, AP Computer Science, Part 1. I've chunked it into different parts to make it more bite-sized and manageable. In this chapter, we're going to learn about subclasses and superclasses, inheritance, polymorphism, type compatibility, abstract classes, and interfaces. I strongly recommend that you watch this slideshow with your book handy, just as I've got mine handy here, because I will be referring to certain page numbers. So um, you might want to just pause this and take a minute to get your book. Inheritance. Inheritance is um, one of the tenets of object-oriented programming, one of the object-oriented programming paradigms that gives us the ability to reuse code. The bottom line about inheritance is that it's going to make it easier for us to reuse code. And why is it important? Well, if you think about something like um, the graphical user interface that you see on your computer or your telephone, um, it has certain characteristics that are shared amongst applications that make your applications easier to uh, learn how to use. And this is because of object-oriented programming that you can reuse code such as menuing systems or um, the shape of the of the frame that the window's in and things like that. So it um, is designed to make it easier for the programmer because as you know we've talked about this before but the most expensive part of any software development project is the people and if we can uh, reduce our use of people resources we're going to save money hopefully and um, be able to develop software faster. So with inheritance we have a super class which is a general class such as a vehicle and then we have subclasses which are uh, more specific so inheritance defines the relationship between these objects that share characteristics a new class or subclass is created from an existing class called a superclass and the subclass absorbs all the state and behavior so all the instance fields all the instance methods from the superclass are, are absorbed by the subclass, plus the subclass can add some new features. The subclass inherits all the characteristics of the superclass, so that's um, all the instance fields. A subclass can be said to be bigger than a superclass in that it contains everything the superclass has, plus more data and methods. But that can also be misleading because if you think about um, the subclass containing more potential objects than the superclass, that uh, conclusion really is erroneous because the subclass is more specific. For example, um, I drive a Toyota. Are there more Toyotas on the road or are there more vehicles on the road? There's more vehicles. Um, so that would be the superclass, which you can say is bigger because it could certainly contain more objects than a specific subclass. The inheritance hierarchy can be demonstrated with an UML diagram, a UML diagram, which we pronounce UML. And I'd like you to turn to page 132 and look at the open up arrow. So we talked about this in class already, but the um, employee is a person. Undergrad is a student. Grad student is a student. Student is a person. Could we also say student is a employee? No, we can't. Look, there's no arrow between the two of them. They have no relationship. Um, a superclass and a su so excuse me to reiterate that is a is the inheritance test. It uh, will tell you whether or not something is a good um, whether one object or one class would be uh, well designed to be a subclass of another or of a specific superclass. Um, a subclass and a superclass may have a method with the same name and the same argument list, and we call that overriding. The method in the subclass overrides the method in the superclass. It's similar to overloading, but it's different. Overloading is when you have one or more method with different method signatures in the same method name, but different method signatures in the same class or in the same scope. With overriding, it um, means that you've got two methods with the same method signature, but one in the superclass and one in the subclass. If part of the implementation from the superclass is retained, we say that the subclass partially overrides the method in the superclass. So let's take a look at page 134. If you look at page 134, at the very, very bottom, we see an example of a method that's partially overriding um, another method. Look at compute grade. The first thing that compute grade does is it calls this compute grade in the superclass. 
super dot compute grade is how it invokes the compute grade method in the super class. Once that method is done running, it will transfer control back here where compute grade adds some functionality, this pass with distinction that is reserved for graduate students. Um, so this partially overrides the method in the super class. I'd like you to pause and we typed up the program on page 133 and 134 and I want you to test it. How do you test this program thoroughly? What do you have to do in your tester class to test this program? I maintain that you have to create an object of each of these classes and then you have to try from that object to call each of the methods in each of these classes just to prove to yourself that uh, it, it works, that each of these um, methods, each of these classes works. Um, all methods and variables of the superclass are inherited by the subclass except constructors. Constructors are not inherited. Private members of a superclass, however, are indirectly accessible by the subclass. Remember, when something is declared as private, it is only accessible inside the class in which it is declared. So it is, even though you've got an inheritance relationship set up, private members are only accessible inside the class in which they are declared. So you can uh, override, as, as we just saw the example on page bottom of page 134, you can call a method in the super class by uh, preceding that method name with the keyword super, super dot, um, super dot compute grade in the example on the bottom of page 134. Um, the method in the subclass may or may not contain a call to the superclass. And in the case of compute grade at the bottom of page 134, that is an example of partial overriding. If you take a look at undergrad, move farther up the page, about the middle of the page, we're looking in the undergrad class on page 134, and find the compute grade method. Inside the undergrad class on page 134, compute grade overrides compute grade in the student class, in the super class. But it doesn't partially override it. Look, there's no call to compute grade in the super class. It just completely overrides it. Um, so you have both. You have overriding, where it completely just overrides the method in the super class, and then you have partial overriding, where the method that is overriding the method in the super class will call the corresponding method in the super class. Constructors are never inherited. So uh, if you have a constructor in your superclass, um, it's a good idea to write a constructor in your subclass. If there is no constructor written for the subclass, the superclass default constructor will be run, um, which makes a certain amount of sense because remember that Java supplies that default for you if you don't write your own um, method, your own uh, constructor method. Um, if the superclass does not have a default constructor, then a compile error will occur. Pause for a moment and think of what, under what circumstances a superclass would not have a default constructor. If you have any questions on that, on why a superclass would not have a default constructor, please come in and see me or shoot me an email and uh, let's explore that a little more. To call the constructor in the superclass, we use the keyword super. Take a look again on page 134. Under uh, public class undergrad extend student, notice the first thing we see is the default constructor, and the first thing that the default constructor does is it calls the default constructor in the super class. Look how it says super with the parentheses after it. That's how it's calling the default constructor in the super class. So, if super is used in the implementation of a subclass constructor, as it is in the case of the default constructor for undergrad, the call to the constructor in the superclass must be the very first line of the constructor. Um, so look at it, the default constructor for undergrad. The call to super is the first and only line in that constructor. If you look at the three argument constructor further, just a little further down inside undergrad, you'll see that, uh, again, it calls the three argument constructor inside the superclass. So your call to super must be the very first thing you do in the constructor. So rules for subclasses. A subclass can add new private instance variables. That's fine. It can add new private, public, or static methods. It can override inherited methods. It may not redefine a public method as private. 
I'll say that again because that one's not so obvious. But if you have a public method in the superclass, you cannot redefine or overload that method with a more restrictive access type. So you can't make it private if it was public in the superclass. You cannot override static methods of the superclass. And think about that. You can probably easily see why. Um, because static means it exists when no objects of the class exist. So how would you be able to override them in the um, in this? How would you be able to override them in the superclass? Um, you should define its own. It should define its own constructors. So the subclass should have its own constructors and not rely just on those in the superclass. And it cannot directly access private members of the superclass. It must use accessor or mutator methods. We call accessors or mutator methods, by the way, I think I mentioned this a few months ago when we were in the other class, but just to reiterate, it must use accessor or mutator methods. We call these accessor and mutator methods the public interface of the class. That's one of the three unique definitions of the word interface. But your public methods in a class, specifically your accessors and your, and your mutators, are called the public interface of the class. It's important to note.